And we are saying, starting off with the powerhouse Sweden, sending a powerhouse to Eurovision. I think it's fair to say that every true Eurovision Vision fan knows Lorraine by now. She already won the contest back in 2012 with Euphoria. And I feel basically silly having to point that out to anybody here. And now she's back this time around with a song titled Tattoo. And the big question is, what is going to happen to the staging in Liverpool? Apparently, the big, really big LED screen that was descending from the ceiling may not be able to be used at Eurovision because, you know, too big, too complicated, too expensive. Uh, but one thing we know for sure is that Lorraine and this Swedish Swedish team from SVT, <laughs> say that three times fast, they're going to put something together out of this world, I'm sure, because this is Lorraine. We're talking about big budget and all of that stuff. But we're here to discuss the song, so we'll be one by one. Connor, why don't you start us out? Your thoughts on Lorraine's tattoo? Yeah, so I mean, one can't help but really stan. Um, and I and I say that not because you know it's it's Lorraine and a winner, Euphoria, the biggest song ever. But I think what I appreciate so much about really her as an artist is that when she comes in, she gives her all, and she has an entire artistic vision and concept. Uh, around the package. Um, and that's, I think, one of the things that I appreciate the most is that when we're thinking about Eurovision and we're thinking especially about whether it's internal or a national selection, a lot of things can change between when it's selected and when it actually shows up live in, in Eurovision. I don't have that concern, regardless of its vocals, the staging. I, I've said it before on my podcast, she could stand on, Liver on the Liverpool stage on a cardboard box and sing the phone book, and I would still love it. Um, so I, it, this is just an amazing song. Um, I think it's right up there with Euphoria, uh, in my personal opinion. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really glad to see her back. And I think the most important thing is I'm glad to see her back with a strong song because we have had some people who have been returning to the contest with, especially winners, a song that maybe isn't as strong, um, or as reflective of who they are as an artist in the current era. I think that this is current Laureen and I think that this will do well. Okay, we're starting off on a good note here from Connor. And yeah, I will say that um, Lorraine is currently the clear betting odds favorite, I think, for a reason. Um, look, the song to me is good. It's actually really nice. And I will say it's maybe not the most unique piece that has ever been written on this planet. It's Lorraine what makes it the most original thing on the planet. I'm okay, I'm a little dramatic here. But the point is, um, I'm genuine when I say, and you said it well, Connor, Lorraine, she's like a very unique artist. There's a certain magic she has, this ability to really elevate a song to something else, whether she reads the phone book, as you said, or sings Tattoo. And at first I thought, well, this is nice. It's not going to be in my top 10, though. And here I am a few weeks later. I'm like, why can't I stop watching this? And uh, again, because it's Lorraine. There's something about her. Mesmerizing. I'm happy for Sweden, even though I'm scared to go back to Sweden because it's so expensive. But then again, Liverpool. You know, how more expensive can it get at this point? I think this will be on replay at every Eurovision party for years to come. And Powerhouse Sweden continues to be on a roll. So nicely done, Sweden. James. All right. So I agree with um, a lot of the superlatives um, that have been thrown around about um, this entry and about uh, Lorene in particular. Um, so I won't go too much into the positives. Um, of, however... Uh, my one overriding concern with this entry is um, I wonder if Lorene um, read uh, Percy Shelley's uh, Ozymandias last year on the 200th anniversary of Percy Shelley's death. And I'm wondering if the monument that Ozymandias built and said, behold, and I'm wondering if she feared that like that monument, it crumbles to dust. And that is why we end up with this not so not as euphoric entry shall we say um because for me personally 2012 that was a high watermark um certainly for eurovision um you know i still in my mind baku is literally in flames from um that moment there and for this one here um and she comes back um with this tattoo um image sort of and this is where this long ramble about Ozymandias is coming in. It's like, is she worried that her legacy of that night is not permanent, that it is just, just fizzing off? 
Um, so yeah, my overall my concern is she's doing a reverse Johnny Logan here, um, where Johnny Logan started with his timid ballad and then he came back with his powerhouse ballad wow. um, that left everyone uh, naked on a fur rug in front of a fireplace. Powerful. Um, so yeah, that's all. Rant over. Wow. Uh, okay, let's see. Arno, wrap it up. What you got for well, us? Well, to me, Lorraine has done it again. She she sent a song that is powerful and, as you said, man, mesmerizing. And I also agree with you when you say that the song in itself isn't like unique, but the way Lorraine performs it and embodies it on stage makes it one of the greatest of the year. Well, to me personally, but I think also in the general opinion, uh, because when Lorreen is on stage, she's just stellar. And if, if, even though the staging like could be anything, and even though like the staging will be different from the Melody Festival and one, I, I'm i not worried at all because uh, SVT will make their mind to make something you know, super amazing. But Lorreen's voice and gestures and facial and just body language, everything makes the song incredible and it's not euphoria 2.0 but we don't want Lorreen to do euphoria 2.0 because that was 2020 that was 2012 <laughs> not 2020 that was 2012 so so it's in we we want to keep it there we don't want uh, Lorraine to come up with a copy and paste of euphoria which is which she hasn't done that she has done a completely different song but still has that huge impact i think yeah so kudos to Lorreen. yes thank you first of all for the super chat beardman has the tremendous cat everyone's talking about the cat james so it kind of stole the show <laughs> is your is your cat around uh no she no, ran off um, next she's time a... she comes back she wants uh, to, uh, to want her attention so she yeah she and she's annoyed with me because uh yeah she is a she's a Lorreen stan and obviously disagrees <laughs> with my reservation Oh, wow. <laughs> we stage bombed you a little bit there. Okay, so um, let's go through our scores in the vision, then I'll share the team score. Uh, Connor, what did you give Sweden and why? So uh, I'll, I guess I'll just reveal the score. Um, in a non-shocking way, I gave it a 10. Um, this is in my personal top three of the year. Um, do I think that this is the winner? No. I, and I think that, um, you know, Arnaud, you said, well, you know, I think that this is the, the standout of the year. And I think for a lot of Eurovision fans, that is the case. But I think that she still has a lot of barriers in front of her to, to get over because there is such a high quality uh, to a lot of the songs and the potential that we have here in Liverpool. So is it one of my favorite songs? Yes. Um, and do I think that it is going to do well? Yes. Do I think it is the winner? to be determined, but it's a solid 10. Um, I'm super duper excited, like I said, to see this live and see what they're going to do. Um, and I can't wait to see it live in Liverpool. I know, he's going to be in Liverpool. Um, my score, it's a combination. So the song to me is a seven, Lorraine is a 10 to me. Therefore, I'm me in the middle, 8.5 points coming from me for Tattoo. A great score. I mean, as you said, some of the, uh, flaws that you point out are legit and I agree with them, but I still think it's a fantastic song. Uh, James, I'm curious what you got gonna have for us. Uh, for me, I give it a solid seven. I do like the entry. I'm not, I'm not gonna be one of those too cool for school guys and say, oh, this is crap. Um, I do think there's a lot of merits to it and um, yeah, here she is again um, to say hello. Um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, just a, so a solid seven from me. A solid seven. That's still good. Arno, bring it home. What you got for us? I'm gonna do the same math as you did, Matt. Uh, Lorraine, to me, tattoo is a is a nine, and Lorraine is a ten, so nine and a half. Nine and a half. So a little bit higher than me, but the still Almost same ten. concept. So there you have it. Those are our four scores. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to share with you the overall skull net, skull, score now. And uh, this is not just the four of us. It's the entire team, Team United. So make sure to uh, take that into consideration. Any questions you have in the chat or comments about the score and the song, let me know. So uh, I will share that with you. But for now, my team doesn't know the score either. So it's going to be a surprise to them. Take a look. This is what Sweden received from Team United. 
8.30. Wow. I've heard a wow, Arno. I think that was you. <laughs> yes, <You've locked. laughs> that was locked. me. What are your thoughts? You happy with that score? Oh yeah, this is this is a a, a pretty high score. It's hard to and, break, but I'm, I'm not surprised. But it's still really high, and I think well deserved. Yeah, and mm -hmm. James, I know technically you are the lowest score on the team. So great score, Sam. I'm not like you know, <laughs> but um, did is that what you kind of expected, knowing that you would be maybe the one potentially bring it down a little? Is that the score uh, you expected? Uh, yes, because I have had this argument before with uh, fellow members of the team, so I knew that I was on the uh, lower end of that. Um, so I expect I fully expected something in the eight point two five and up range for this. Yeah. Um, so that's what it is, and we're going to compare it with the rest of the songs as we go for the night. Just a couple of comments here. Fernanda thinks it's too high. Uh, Janula says, I don't think her vocals were great at all in Melody Festival and Final, but maybe she had problems there. Connor, you're always uh, in tune with everything. I think for the actual official music video, they used the semifinal performance, right? For that reason? Yes, I believe so. I'm not 100%, but um, yeah, her... Her final performance maybe wasn't the the best of everything, the, all the runs that we saw. Um, but what I think is ironic is that I think that they strategically picked, if I remember correctly, if I remember Melody Festival correctly, I think they strategically picked the semifinal performance because it's better, because it was after the stage invasion. And she, she the, the performance completely uh, transformed in comparison to more of a, I guess, rehearsed and just... I don't want to say go through the motions because it's not Laureen, but going through the choreography and, and the, the storyboard of it, she was killing it on fire. So I think that, yes, her vocals were slightly different and, and different uh, for the semifinal, but I actually kind of prefer it if she did it that way because there's a lot more passion and a lot more authenticity in that performance than there is in the final. Yeah, and people corrected me. I appreciate that. I knew it wasn't the final performance, it was the jury final performance, not the semi-final performance. It also had to do with the whole smoke effect and all that stuff, not just the vocals. So there were other things that just didn't look quite right. But um, yeah, so that's what it is.